In this video I'm going to show you uh, the Scotch Gambit, which I have played um, a couple of times before. It actually used to be my main opening, the first opening I actually learned when I started playing chess. Um, okay, so it goes e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. Um, and now normally you play the Scotch Gambit by playing d4 first, um, and after takes, knight takes would be the Scotch game. Uh, which is fairly popular, and uh, bishop c4 here is known as the Scotch Gambit. I, I think a slight, um, the better move order to play the Scotch Gambit is to go bishop c4 first, um, and now say after after knight f6, castles, bishop c5, you can now play d4. Um, the idea of this is you want to get into a max lang attack, and so after, after he takes d4 you can get your e5 move in. And after, this is the sort of position you'll get in a max lang. Um, bishop e6, and now knight g5, uh, which has a few tricks. Uh, first of all, if black takes an f6, you can take on e6. Um, and after pawn takes e6, queen h5 check, and uh, we're going to win the bishop next move. Okay, so in this variation, it's quite very sharp. Uh, queen d5 is like the only move. Knight c3. You can notice how well, the queen has to come to f5. If black takes on c3, then the queen takes queen simply. It's just winning the queen because of uh, the bishop is pinned to the uh, to the king by the rook. Um, so black can't do that. And after the queen f5, um, knight comes into e4. Bishop comes back to b6. And uh, yeah, a very sharp play emerges after g4. So yeah, this could be a very, very tricky way to play. Um, and ideally, this is what white wants to get. Most of the time, if you play the other way around, so if you play um, so this way, so bishop, take, bishop c4, there's a line where after knight f6, castles, knight takes e4, um, rook e1, E d5, bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, knight c3. Um, this is the, the idea behind uh, sacking your bishop on d5. And now after knight c3, you're winning the piece back. Since you're threatening the queen and the knight. The knight can't take the knight because uh, the rook is pinning the king. And after pawn takes, then black will lose his queen. So here the best move for black is to move his queen to a5. Another option is to go queen to h5, um, but this is not as good. Okay, so after queen to a5, now white takes on e4. So now threatening discovered check ideas. So bishop e6, knight e g5. Um, threatening to regain the pawn after uh, a couple of exchanges on e6. And uh, black's best option here is just to castle queen side, and in this position, it's pretty much just just equal here. Um, you know, a couple more moves. Bishop d g5. Black has two moves again: rook e8 or rook to uh, oops, rook to f8. If rook to e8, then you go queen e2. Uh, the only problem is okay. So after king d7. Um, it's quite a slight trip behind this. Rook e1 looks natural, but after queen takes e1 check, um, and now say queen takes e1, rook takes e6, queen moves, rook doubles up on the e file. Um, black's doing pretty well, he's got two rooks to the queen, um, and white's pieces aren't very well placed. Black's just going to play h6, g5, puts bishop on a bad square. Um, you might even be playing rook e2 and have back rank mate. Uh, frets. Okay, so white has to uh, take on e8, and after he takes, go queen to d3. Um, yeah, these variations are very sharp, and well, this is fairly sharp. Um, but yeah, black should be fine here. And if rook to f8, uh, white just does the same thing, he goes queen e2, and black can't take on the f3 just yet. Because, okay, say if queen takes f3, then queen takes g5, uh, would be better for black. 
But after rook takes f3, we can play rook e8 check immediately. And if king d7, we have queen e6 mate. And if rook takes e8, queen takes e8, knight has to come back to d8, and then obviously queen takes d8, so it's going to be checkmate. So black can't take on f3. Um, and so he tends to play moves like h6 here, drive the bishop back, uh, maybe to g3, and he might centralize his queen here. So, yeah, there are enough ways to try to play king d7. So now that he is threatening to take on uh, f3, um, you can just drop your bishop back to h4 if you want. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is equal. This is what you know, I, I was always trying to avoid as white. The reason I don't play the Scotch Gambit anymore is I always found that I'd end up in these sort of lines um, um, after knight takes e4. I mean, there is, a, a be I think, a better approach where you can play e5, um, and after d5, bishop b5. Um, yeah, there's a line that goes like this, and you, you capture on d4 and bishop d7. Um, so yeah, maybe I should um, look at this a bit more. But okay, so yeah, the way I want to play, if I was going to play this line, I need to play Bishop C4 first, which I uh, I am doing currently against E5. Um, okay, so Knight F6 or Bishop C5 does really matter. So Knight F6 Castle and now Bishop C5. Um, after knight takes e4, uh, it's looking a bit dodgy for black. Uh, let's play a quick d4. Um, okay, up d5. Then you can give it b5. It sort of just transposes back into the other line, except after f3. Um, and white is pawn down here, but after f3 and open a rook file, this could be potentially very dangerous for black. Um, so yeah, um, but okay. So on bishop c5, now d4. Uh, okay, so you can play b4 here. This is known as Evans Gambit. Um, okay, so after d4, black of course doesn't have to take with e pawn. He can uh, play knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. Yeah, so if knight takes d4. Was going to take on d4, and our bishop takes d4. We play bishop to g5 and sell to castles, king h1, d6, f4, so even h6 has come back again and uh, we're threatening to play c3. Oops, I sort of missed a move out here. Uh, we have to play c3 first and now do this. Why is there bishop takes b2? Um, so yeah, so king h1, same plan. And it's got f4, and the idea is you're going to take on e5 and on f6 and create weak pawns around black's king. Okay, so if bishop takes d4, then we do the same thing. This is more effective though. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop to g5, castles, and now we can go f4 straight away. So there's no pin. Um, Sometimes not, I've, I've had games where the knight comes back to e6, say d6, uh, you just take, 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 take. And uh, notice how black's king's very weak now, um, despite, so that's what you sacked your pawn for. Um, you can go c3, and that's it, the knight e6, play a check, and uh, yeah, this position doesn't look bad for white at all. Okay, so if it's set up to like a simple move like queen h4, attacking the f6 pawn. Um, maybe knight might can block, and then knight a3, putting your rook on d file. Um, I think white's doing okay here. Okay, obviously the scotch is uh, a bit of a risky variation, I guess. I mean, it is, it is a gambit. Uh, not many grandmasters do play it. Um, hence why they play they play the scotch game by not giving up a pawn. Got to take and they take. Um, obviously, this is very this is respectable for white. So you can play this way if you don't particularly. You're not particularly a very risky player. Um, but yeah, 
I might do a video on this um, next time. Okay, so I'm going to go back into I'm going to go back into the max lang attack, which is what we want to uh, to get. So to e5, they have to go d5 is their best move. Now we take on e6, f6, they take on c4, regaining their piece. Um, and now we play rook e1 check, bishop e6, knight g5. Okay, so I've already told you that uh, any like pawn or queen takes on f6, we will take on e6 and play queen h5 check, winning the bishop. Um, so I'll show you that quickly, so it takes, 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 queen h5 check, wins the bishop. Um, so the only move here is black needs to defend this bishop. So queen d5 is a very strong move. Um, to queen d5, it protects the bishop also. Um, it's going to pre pre prevent white from playing queen h5 in the mean run, uh, later on. Okay, so knight c3, queen f5. Um, okay, notice again here, if queen came back to d7, this would be very bad. Let's go knight to e4, and now, so now bishop's under attack, so say after bishop e6. Then uh, black is lost, takes rook g7, knight f6 check, wins the queen. Um, okay, and so bishop comes all the way back to f8. Then already black has um, got a very dubious position here. Uh, okay, so we can probably take on e6, takes. Um, f6 check looks pretty dangerous. Uh, f7 check looks pretty dangerous now. Um, the reason we want to play this is so now when the knight comes to g5, um, it's going to be played with a tempo. Um, okay, so the queen has to move again. And uh, we come into e6, and our queen's arriving on h5, and yeah, this doesn't look too good for black. Okay, so queen queen d7 can't be played. Queen f5 is the best move. Now we go knight e4. Okay, by the way, if, if uh, black tries to castle here, then we can just play g4. And okay, so if queen takes g4, queen takes g4, this is obviously just going to win a piece. Um, and if, say, queen to e5, we've got to be careful in these sort of lines because f4, if you play f4 in these sort of positions, um, d3 check can often be um, very good. It's not as good here because we could take the bishop, um, but normally when the bishop's on b6, uh, f4 is not a good idea. So here we might just put our knight back on f3, attacking the queen, queen has to keep defending the the bishop and now we can win after takes g7, rook g8 and now knight f6 it's attacking the queen and the rook um, and yeah, no no the queen the queen doesn't really have any squares either the queen's only got one square here on d6 um, ok and we can just take on Take on g8, rook takes g8, and we are the exchange up. Um, okay, so. Okay, so black's best idea is to play bishop b6. Um, first of all, it gives the queen a few more squares. Um, but the main point of buying bishop b6 is now uh, it's not fair to be taken. And now, if after g4, which white, which white will do here. Obviously, queen d5 is no good because we just take, take, uh, take, uh, rook g8, knight f6 check. Um, same sort of principle. So we're winning the queen and rook. Uh, so queen has to come to e5. And the idea now that the bishop on b6, f will be really bad because d3 check. Um, and the queen will escape. Okay, so you may think, okay, after f4, you might be able to, if queen d5, we win, but. So I'm going to do that, d3 check is going to be played. Um, I'm just going to king g2, the queen can now come to d4. Um, and maybe c3, then come back to d8 maybe. Or actually we can just play it back to, uh, could even play it back to d5 considering now to take, take uh, rook g8. There's no, there's no knight of 6 checks, the king is pinned. And the knight's pinned to the king. Okay, so okay, so we go g four, 
they go queen to e5 and we do not play f4 there's a simple it's quite a nice way which we can uh, wait for us to continue here take on g7, rook g8 and I'll take on e6 um, okay so and not f takes e6 we, uh, bishop to h6 and it's going to hold on to this, this pawn um, so out to castles we just go g5 and this protects the bishop and also threatens knight to f6 uh, which is very dangerous so it's probably not the best way for black to continue okay so okay so after g4 if um, if queen takes g4, then we can take on g4. Bishop takes g4, and then take on f7, uh, g7, rook g8, and knight f6 for double check. Um, and black is losing this. Um, we can take the rook on g8, and yes, yeah, this is a simple win for for white. It's just a whole rook up, and that pawn on g8 is about to promote. Okay, so. Going back, other alternatives. Okay, so queen g6 maybe. Um, we can just take on e6. F takes e6. Um, and now I quite like the look of f7 check. Now, okay, so the, the idea of me playing f7 check is I want to play knight g5 after he takes with a tempo. Um, okay, so I'll have a quick look at this. Okay, so f7 check. Um, King or queen takes, I was going to get knight g5, attacking the, that piece. Um, okay, and if uh, the king moves, I was going to go knight g5 anyway. So say queen takes, knight g5. And now the idea is I'm hitting the queen, but also threatening rook takes e6, next move. Um, so the queen has to move. Obviously it can't come to f6 or g6 or e7, because after rook takes e6, the, pin's gonna, uh, the queen's going to be lost. Out to queen d7 maybe. Rook takes e6 check, um, and once again white has got a good position here. I mean you could also play. I guess you could also play f takes g7, because uh, obviously if, if queen takes g7 and bishop g5 is very strong with the uh, with knight f6 check. So yeah, f takes g7 is also playable. Um, and now after rook, say rook g8 we can do the same plan uh, bishop g5 um, very knight f6 check um, so yeah this, this is no good for black either yeah so there's it's pretty strong variation uh, for white especially you know if you know what you're doing black can get in a lot of trouble very very quickly okay so g4 what else can black do here? Okay, so obviously queen d5 doesn't work. Queen e5 is the best move. Um, okay, so... So take, take, take. Rook comes to g8. Uh, yeah, bishop h6. If we just discuss this, this is um, pretty good for for white. Okay, say so after like d3, you'd say ignore the pawn and go uh, c3, and if um, say d2, well you can just take the pawn. There's some lines where after d2 you gotta be quite careful. It's normally when the black's castled, uh, you have to just play rook e2. Um, well, so yeah, after d2 here, you can just take on take on d2 with your queen. Yeah, so here black's struggling a bit, I think. Okay, castles, g5. So the idea of this move, is you may think this is bad because it's blocking your bishop. Um, but theoretically, you're the exchange up here since black's rook's tied down. Black's rook is tied down to the defense of the g7 pawn, um, and your bishop's defending that pawn. And so yeah, your bishop, may, your bishop may be out of the game. But so is the black rook, and so yeah, you're, you're probably going to be the exchange up. Um, 
okay, now knight f6 can be a threat. And okay, so d d2 tends to be an idea in these sort of positions. Uh, okay, so obviously a yeah, queen can't take because of the rook. Um, and if knight took on uh, d2, the radius looks extremely dangerous with the bishop and rook and queen all coming around the king. Um, there's probably a number of ways to play this. And queen queen f4 looks pretty. Pretty deadly for for White. Yeah, I think White's just going to be losing this opposition. He has to go like rookie two, um, and then just knight e five, threatening knight f three check. Um, yeah, White's going to be lost. Yeah, so in these sort of positions after d two, you have to just go rookie two, um, and then the idea is just going to go queen f one, rook d one. Uh, so you're going to bring a queen around to g two. Um, and also threatening knight f6 at some point. Um, so yeah, they might play. It's quite tricky to see what what Black's idea is going to be here. Um, yeah, because after queen d5, any sort of moves like that, he's going to get knight f6. Um, and after say knight e7, um, he can play knight f6 as well. So yeah, it's very tricky. For black here. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything on the on the scotch. I mean, there is a, some of the variations. Um, after takes bishop c4. Okay, there's some variations after bishop c5. So they play this move straight away. Um, normally, I just if I was white, I'd just castle here, and after. Knight f6, you play e5, and d5 just transposes back into the max lang, which we just looked at. Um, an alternative is if you don't like that and you think it's a bit too sharp, c3 is a playable alternative. Not to takes, which takes f7 check, king takes, queen to uh, d5 check. Um, and now, after king hit e8, we can regain the piece on c5. Although, when I've played this before, I quite like playing queen to h5 check first. Okay, so the reason I like playing this first is okay, I want them to play g6, so now I'm going to take on, on c5 and notice how this pawn, they can't grab another pawn because after bishop takes, um, their position's falling apart immediately. Um, okay, and then after the king moves, you now I can take with check and then regain this pawn. Um, so yeah, this is also playable, so you can play this away, and then let's say after knight f6, bishop g5, black's just going to castle by hand, put his rook on e8, and go king g8, so he's continued development, rook e8, knight d2, um, king could go back into the corner now, or bishop might develop, so yeah, I mean, this position is fine for white as well. Okay, so they, it's equal material. So yeah, that's another way of playing. And then if, um, say after c3, if black doesn't do anything here, um, okay, so if he doesn't take, so say if he just plays knight f6, um, then we, we're just gonna, might be able to take on d4 at some point, or just play um, e5 first. So probably take on d4. If you take on d4 immediately, bishop b4 check. Could be quite annoying, and then after and say knight blocks, knight takes e4. Um, and then I haven't actually analyzed this, so it looks. I don't know. I mean, you probably would be able to hang on to the pawn maybe after bishop d2. Um, yeah, it looks very complicated. You probably want to stick this into your computer and analyze it. Okay, so after say knight five, you can just play e5 and I don't know, say knight e4 and take on d4 and get a sort of position and it's going to castle so it should be fine as well um, yeah, if you do choose to castle here yeah, okay so knight f6 goes in back into the max lang okay d6 might be played as well it's quite annoying and boring sort of move um, so obviously now they're going to play knight f6 and you can't play e5 okay but I think the best thing in this variation to do is 
just play c3 and now they have to take so it's just going to get a really nice center so after you take um, knight takes knight down a pawn um, but you have quite a lot of counterplay so say if knight f6 bishop g5 is always a good idea considering this bishop's blocked um, from coming back to e7 to undo the pin and if, it, if it, h6 is ever played just go back to uh, h4 and g5 can never be played because it just gives it black a horrible weakness on his king side and say if black castles here he's going to play knight d5 and uh, yeah we're just going to double his pawns on the king's side um, and uh, black is in big trouble here so yeah so this is this should be fine for white as well um, I think black must has to play knight e7 or something uh, okay, you could probably still go bishop g5 and then castles. You can just play natural, sort of normal moves. Um, so maybe knight d5 here. Um, okay, so say we go to h6, you just put the bishop back. And yeah, so you get yeah, a lot of play for, for the pawn. So yeah, I think that's everything on the, on the Scotch Gambit for now. Um, yeah, I would say it's very good for getting you to at least 180 strength in your ECF grades or or you know even like 2100 FIDE um, yeah I, I, I was playing it from when I first started playing chess up until when I was graded like 170, 180 somewhere around there um, but yeah it was a good opening you know I've, I've, I know a friend who's 210 and he's still playing it uh, regularly as white um, so yeah, it's worth it's worth looking at. Anyway, thanks for watching. Goodbye.